Hi everyone, this is Bobby from BN-Games.com and we're here doing another classic capture. Today we're playing Bra Brain Dead 13 for the 3DO. Um, I'll be honest with you, I've cut a lot of video out here because this it would be a really long video. Um, the intro alone is what, like five minutes long? Something like something that? Something like that. Uh, Brain Dead 13 is is a game that is very much of its time. It is basically an animated um, FMV. FMV with some situational moments. Well, quick time events. Um, unlike current games with quick time events, you actually have to guess uh, your way and, and <laughs> for the most part, you have to uh, memorize um, patterns. But yeah, well, pattern. That's, that's one. It's kind of like a clicking it. point. Yeah. Because uh, it doesn't really tell you where to go. You just kind of <clears throat> got to see your background and see what your options are. You know, and, uh, one of the things I'm kind of impressed at is even though you know it's all trial and error, you know, there's still like a different death animation depending on which way well, you go. Uh, that, that in itself is something to talk about. Yeah, I mean, that, I, I say that's impressive. I, I didn't act fast enough when I finally died. Um, it should be noted that you have infinite lives, infinite retries, and you will use them. Hell, it took, you know, five, six tries just to get past the first frame. Yeah. Yeah, you know. Um, another thing to note, I think, is important is uh, this, you know, animation-wise, uh, quality-wise, it's about as good as um, a Saturday morning cartoon of the era. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, oh, yeah. And uh, kind if, of brutal. If not a little more in uh, uh, intricate, impressive because yeah. of the fact that it's so brutal. Um, there's unique death animations for almost every instance. Uh, and some of them are kind of creative. I mean, you know, brutal and grotesque, but really creative. And, and, um, and, and, and to, to adapt, add to that, this got a kid's rating in, yeah. back then. Yeah, well, censors were a lot more lenient. Yeah, I'm just, I'm I just mean, saying. as long as you weren't cursing. Well, there's some other stuff much. later that uh, of a sexual nature that happened, but you won't see that in this Yeah, story. well. Couldn't get that far. Who Framed Roger Rabbit is like. A, <laughs> it's very gee. much. That's very much in that kind of, kind of ideal. Um. Yeah, so it's trial and error. You, there's going to be a lot of death. You're going to see a death rebirth screen a lot. Um, it's just, unfortunately, it's just the way things go. Um, this came out on multiple systems. came out of the CDI, the 3DO, the Jaguar CD. also came out on um, uh, Windows and uh, PowerPC PlayStation. Max, PlayStation, Sega Saturn. Um, this game goes for quite a bit, actually, as a collector's item. Um, anywhere from twenty to forty dollars, depending on the version, and you gotta really be sure to make sure you you, you know what you're looking. You, if you're really interested in this game, you really need to be sure that um, you know what you're looking for because the PlayStation um, and Jaguar, Jaguar, no, not the Jaguar, the the, the PlayStation, the CDI, and 3DO all come on two discs. Um, now that's annoying because you have to load the second disc in some situations, which I show in this video. But the FMV, the video quality is a lot higher. On the other uh, systems, like the Sega Saturn, for example, um, all of the FMVs were compressed severely to fit all in one CD. And you got to remember, CD is only 700 megabytes, and there's you know tons of unique death animations. It's all voiced. Um, so for the day, it was a fairly large thing. See, there's the because <laughs> I went into a different area, it asked me to change the the CD. Um, so that's one thing to mention. Also, for the 3DO version, which this is not really highly uh, talked about anymore, probably due to the age of the game, um, 3DO actually had to release a second version of Disc 1, uh, which you're seeing here, which is 1.1, because there is uh, a bug which can freeze the game, and, and you can technically not finish it. It will crash. It will crash back to, uh, to the start screen. So, um, you, if you're going to buy this as a collector's item, you want to make sure you have disc 1.1. 1. 1. Um, I mean, that's a, that's, a lot of, that's a lot of information right there. You know. um, and, you know, it, it, it's, a, it's one of those games where you have to keep on your toes. You're going to be guessing directions. You only use one button for some context. But it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't tell you. It doesn't tell you at all. Um, you just got to guess your way through everything. You know, um, the maze here is a little easier because you can, it, it's giving you direction, you know, left, up, down. But when you're in other situations, you, sometimes you don't know. And, and, and boss, bosses specifically, um, they, they require specific timing presses in a specific order to get past them. And it becomes trial and error. And, you, you know, I'm sure many a controller were broken. Mouse, <laughs> if you were on <laughs> PC or Mac. Uh, this is the first time that any of us played it because it wasn't one that we all owned. What do you guys think? 
I I thought it was impressive. Um, <clears throat> yeah, no, it was it was it was definitely something unique. Although I, in watching you play the maze here, I, I see that a lot of areas are repeated, uh, and you kind of get stuck, so you end up looping back, which is um, well, that's the whole point of the maze. No, I know, I know, no, but I'm just saying it, it's. There were a couple of parts where he went in all three directions, for example, here, and it, <clears throat> it ended up taking him back to the same places. So it seems like, well, that's, in that's, some cases, it can loop you back even in all three directions. Yeah, well, that's that's why. I mean, a, a labyrinth, uh, labyrinth maze like this is kind of supposed to be like that. It wouldn't be so bad if it wasn't for the fact that any corner means death. Yeah, pretty much. <clears throat> that's pretty brutal, considering, if you really yeah. think about it. Um, another platform it's on if you don't want to play it on an original console or if you don't own a machine that'll run it, you know, PC or Mac-wise. Um, <laughs> it's, it's too, this is too intensive for my PC. Seriously. Um, this was actually released in 2010 on the iPhone. <clears throat> so it is an iPhone app. I haven't played it that version. So throw your iPhone at a wall. But yes, but from what I underst understand, it is verbatim pretty much the same exact version. Um, although on a smaller screen. So. I'm sure it's higher res, though. Yeah. I would hope so. Most most people who are, are looking for this game to collect it are going to remember it had a, had a 3DO or, or, or one of the other systems and, and had played it as a child. <laughs> Otherwise, if you're a collector and never played it before, probably not worth your time. It's not, it doesn't have any kind of real replay value. It is extremely difficult uh, from a trial and error perspective. And, um, you know, it, I mean, it is what it is. It's It's... It's definitely a good look at the time, you know, 1996, the kind of the kind of games that were out, uh, especially on the PC. Um, you know, that kind of that thought process. This is well before Call of Duty and everything else everyone knows now. Um, but yeah, um, I, I wouldn't recommend it, uh, but especially at the price point. You know, I paid a, I paid almost 20 bucks for this thing, um, and I got 1.1 thankfully. And um, there's not a lot of information about it out there. Although um, there are uh, some guides on PDF that explain how to, um, well, what's going on. You know, generally it doesn't. How to win, basically. But uh, yeah, that's uh, Brain Dead 13 on the 3DO. <clears throat> Please subscribe and uh, let us know what you. Th